Hello, welcome to the App Code blog on YouTube. Today we're going to do a little more work with the UI Picker view and we're going to pick up where we left off last time. And to get that code, you can go to www.theappcodeblog.com slash code slash picker view tutorial dot zip. And that'll give you the code that we're going to be starting off with here, which I'm going to open up. I'm going to go ahead and run it and we can see where we're at so far. Right now, we just have a very simple UI picker view, and it's each row is getting named with the same string. So, not very exciting. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna add a second component to that picker view, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna add what looks like a second column. They call it components, but it looks like a second column in the picker view, and then we're gonna populate the two different components with uh, different arrays, and then we're going to log what gets selected from that uh, when we select one. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. And the first thing I'm going to do is create our arrays. Um, so let's go into the header file, and we're going to declare a couple of arrays here, and I'm just going to name them array one and array 2, and those are terrible names in the real world. If I was doing a real app, I would make them uh, much more descriptive names than that, but for our purposes here, it doesn't really matter. Okay, now I'm going to declare two actions. Populate array 1. Oh, I can't spell here all of a sudden. Populate array 1, and then as you probably already guessed, populate array two. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy those and go to our implementation file. And here we are going to implement those two methods. I'm gonna do it right here. And I've already got some code that I'm going to cheat here and copy and paste to populate those arrays. So there's one, and here's the other. Now, we need to call those methods from our view did load. And the reason I'm doing populating them in a separate method is just to keep our view did load a little bit cleaner. I don't really like to. Uh, get that all jumbled up and messy with too much stuff. So we'll just do it like this. Okay, so we've populated our two arrays. Now let's go ahead and set the number of components in our picker view to two. We do that in this method here and we're just gonna return two instead of one. And let's go ahead and run that and I'll show you what we're talking about. And you'll see now it changed it to two components, two columns. So that's what we're doing there. And now we're going to populate those two columns with our arrays. So let's go to, first of all, let's set the number, let's be dynamic with setting the number of components or number of rows in the component. And for that, we're going to use an if block and it's going to say component, if component equals zero, which is the one farthest to the left, it starts with zero. Um, then return array one, whoops, array one count. And then I'm just going to use an else here. And here we'll return, you guessed it, array two count. Okay, now we'll set the number of rows in each component. And now let's go ahead and set the title for each row. So I'm going to steal this if else block here, paste it in there, and then I'm just going to change this to say object at index row. And then I can copy and paste that down here and change it back to array two and do the same thing. Let's go ahead and run it and let's see what we have here should be populating our two components with our arrays and 
we're all set there. Now, one more thing we're going to do is we're just going to log to the console what we've chosen. So you see right now I'm logging the row and the component chosen, but we want to change that to uh, log the string that's actually getting chosen. So we're, again, we're going to use our if else block. So again, I'm going to cheat and copy and paste that. And then we're going to just log to the console. Um, you selected a, and then that will be what we selected from array one, from array one. So I can really just copy and paste that here, like so. And then for the else, we'll say you selected the color and that will be array two. Okay, let's go ahead and run that. And now, if we look down here at the console, when we select something, it'll say you selected a gerbil, you selected the color green, and so on. So that's how we would get our values out of our UI picker view of what is selected. And then in the real world for, you know, an app you're working on, you wouldn't log it to the console, you'd save that value somewhere and then pass it somewhere else that you're going to be using it. Okay, that's all we're going to do for today. I hope you enjoyed, or at least found this a little bit useful, uh, working with the UI Picker View. And as always, please come visit me at theappcodeblog.com, where you'll find lots of tutorials on a lot of great subjects. And until next time, have a great day.